righty. So today we're going to talk about this crazy shit called NFTs, art. Uh, NFTs, for those that don't know, are called non-fungible tokens. Um, and yeah, it's basically digital collectibles. Um, kind of like if you've ever played a video game um, and you've gotten like ridiculously cool items or you want to like make your character look super dope, it's the same kind of concept. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever played RuneScape or World of Warcraft, but you have items in these games that used to sell on eBay. Some of them still do for like loads of real money. Um, and that concept has kind of now been blurred and bridged into artwork um, and the artwork is now authenticated using blockchain uh, which proves scarcity you know and I guess the simplest way to describe this concept is if I go to the Louvre and I see the Mona Lisa I can take a photo of it I can print it I can distribute it I can kind of do whatever I want with it same thing kind of goes on Instagram you can share photos like post other people's work and it's just a simple tagging um, but there's no inherent value to it. And the thing that's changed is now that you can use blockchain and say, hey, this does have value. I can provably say that this uh, exists in this quantity or this scarcity. Um, the thing that's valuable is the contract. The, the right, can you guys make sure you're muted if you're not talking? There's, we're getting feedback and echo. Thank you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I can mute everyone too if it becomes an issue. Um, so yeah, so basically you have people, collectors essentially, people who are were in the fine art world, who aren't in the fine art world, essentially these high net worth millennials um, or just like crypto whales who are collecting these scarce digital things. And this all started with CryptoKitties a couple of years ago. I'm not sure if you guys know what CryptoKitties is, but it's just these little digital cats that are rare and they're on the blockchain and basically some of them now are going for tens of thousands of dollars um, and they don't do anything. They're just cats. They're just uh, collectibles, but because they're scarce um, and people, there's like a, a, a desire for them. That's what's kind of driving the value, um, especially what we're seeing like in the last year, people are kind of, one, you know, you can look at GameStop today, but people are looking for alternate assets and stores of wealth outside of fiat and tangible dollars um, because they're better investments right now than just holding dollars. So you have art, collectibles, digital art and collectibles, um, even Pokemon cards, everything's gone up a lot in value this year. Um, maybe it's because we're hedging against inflation. Maybe everyone's just totally crazy and spending their stimulus checks on fucking digital art and Pokemon cards um, and GameStop stock. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so basically there's this metaverse, so to speak, of crypto artists and digital artists um, and fine artists, people who don't necessarily dabble in digital art or animation who are all coming together and kind of creating profiles, um, moving from Instagram to Twitter, which is like the social platform for all things cryptocurrency, tech, and now art as well. And they're kind of reinventing themselves and finding collectors for their work who want to collect these scarce editions of their work. No. Oh, sorry, I thought that was a question. Uh, anyways. So what I'm going to do is kind of do a quick intro to some of the platforms um, that exist that you can sign up for and apply for, um, as well as a couple projects that are a hybrid between video game world meets like art gallery meets like you can do live stream concerts and they're like these social ecosystems kind of like Second Life where you have in-game currencies that you can transact and buy things for real dollars, fake dollars, digital dollars. Um, and it's, it's really interesting because now you have this digital thing that you can't do a lot with, but we're starting to see people building virtual art galleries that you can just pop into and walk around and talk to other people uh, in just from your web browser. Um, there's also now, you know, five, 10 years in the future, if you want to think about like where technology is headed, 
uh, digital displays, uh, like digital art frames are pretty big right now. There's small ones, big ones. We're now having light field displays, which actually like display holograms, like to your eyes without like 3D kind of glasses or anything. So a lot of these artists are now getting really creative with the ways they're displaying their artwork, especially in like a physical kind of realm. Um, and then physical painters, not to leave anyone out who's a physical artist or painter, or fine artists, uh, maybe in the gallery setting. Um, there's particular artists that are either making digital variants, teaming up with animators, musicians are teaming up with animators, um, and basically creating these like art collectives and selling their work. Um, I'm not going to talk about too much about pricing. I'll let you guys do your little uh, research on what this stuff is selling for. Um, one example is this guy Beeple. He's been making a piece of artwork every day for 10 years. And a few weekends ago, he sold three and a half million dollars in a weekend of digital works. Um, and they all came with like a little digital display as well. Um, and a lot of those pieces are now also selling on the secondary market. And the cool thing about blockchain uh, art is that when you sell a piece, Anytime that piece sells throughout its history, you're actually going to get royalties back um, because it's tied into uh, the chain. So as an artist, if your work appreciates, if you become more no like get more notoriety over time, anytime that piece sells or changes hands, you're actually going to get a kickback um, off of the sale price. So let's start. Uh, Kyle, who is that artist? Can you spell it, that name? Yeah. Yeah, Beeple, B-E-E-P-L-E. -E -E. What's up, Kay? Nice to see you. <laughs> We're recording this, so if you miss any any parts, I basically just talked about like the, the backstory to what's happening. Um, it'll be recorded, and you can you can take a peek. Sounds good. Hey, Kyle. Um, huh? Does that continue down the chain? Yes. Like, yes, it does. So, so like, say that, you know, you were like a gallery per se, and you bought a bunch of art from certain artists, then every time that you say flip the piece of art to some collector or something, anytime they did it, you would also continue to get those royalties. So, in a sense. No, that's, that's a good question. So right now, there's a lot of space for there, there needs to be a lot of more innovation for curators and gallerists yeah. to kind of make money. There's some very interesting uh, projects. It was actually a project that just happened this last weekend called B20. Um, and it was an anonymous collector who basically bought up all of this guy's Beeple, this Beeple artwork, the one of ones that he sold. And what they did is they created an index fund and issued their own token around the, the wallet that owns all of these artworks and basically did a fundraiser. So anyone who buys these tokens owns a fraction of the collection. Um, so if that collection ever sells, anyone who's a token holder is now going to get a certain percentage of that, that sale. So there's a lot of room for creativity and kind of uh, choose your own adventure um, in this space. Um, but I would say from a curator and gallerist perspective, um, if you're a collector, you're just going to make money off the profit if you sell a piece for profit. Um, for the most part, it's cutting out the middleman with the exception of a lot of these platforms and marketplaces that I'm going to show you guys. Also, I know there's probably going to be a ton of questions. Um, I'll leave like 10 minutes at the end for questions. So just like make mental notes, save it. Um, you can also DM me if you have to hop off at any point um, and I'm happy to answer or delve into. Uh, as I mentioned, we're, I'm going to send out a link for a Discord channel um, where I'm going to be onboarding a lot more artists, asking questions, um, kind of rewarding people with uh, a social token. Um, so if that's something you're interested in and you want to get free cryptocurrency, uh, stick around till the end. I mean, the last time I'll, I'll pitch that till the end. <laughs> All right. So give me a sec. I'm just going to share on my main computer some stuff. All right, so I know it's a little choppy and hard to see because it's video, but this is one of the biggest platforms, if not the biggest platform, it's called Nifty Gateway. Um, right now they're advertising a, a collab that they're gonna have with Monster Cat and this, this particular visual artist. Um, and yeah, basically what they specialize in is drops. Um, 
I know some of the stuff we're kind of passing by is really insane. Uh, there's like some of these this basketball piece that someone sold for seventeen thousand dollars, and it's just Michael Jordan. It's it's the Chicago Bulls. Um, some artist drew the Chicago Bulls, and someone bought it for seventeen and a half grand. Um, yeah, so it, so it's not just art. A lot of it's collectibles. I'm not going to say that guest stuff isn't art, um, but there's some really interesting kind of stuff on here. Um, basically, what you do is you apply through this platform, um, and they specialize in drops. So you have some audiovisual stuff. You got this artist, Rafik Enadal, who's like a really crazy AI uh, and machine learning artist. He did like a bunch of prints and open editions for his work. Oh. Um, most of these pieces also sell out in a matter of seconds, um, just for perspective. If you ever want to watch some of these auctions, they're every day at four. Um, so yeah, so this guy made six different editions. Each one of them was a thousand bucks. I think each of them comes with like a physical print that he signs as well. Um, and they're just stills and he sold salt, pepper and cumin. I guess he needs a lot more. Sorry, what was that? Someone's <laughs> unmuted. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, so this is this is one of the platforms. Um, also, everyone, just make sure you're muted um, if, you're, if you're not chatting right now. Give me one second. Just gonna... Cool. So yeah, so this is one platform, Nifty Gateway, super, super cool platform. They do drops um, and you have to apply. This is super rare. This is another platform. Uh, and I wanted to focus on an artist that specializes in paintings. Uh, he does a lot of fine art uh, stuff. He's known as like a physical painter. And basically he's teamed up with uh, an animator in some of these cases to basically turn his paintings into animated works. Um, yeah, he's he's super well known in the space. Um, really awesome. This piece is actually just a uh, a, a time uh, a time lapse of him making the artwork, and I think it sold last for fifty five thousand um, dollars. Yeah, Trevor Jones is probably one of the top artists in the space. He's been doing this for probably a decade, um, and he's super well known. I think he 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 used to hold, or he, he might still hold the record for the highest grossing individual artwork um, at the time, which is, uh, I'm not quite sure, but probably close to a million dollars. Uh, so Super Rare is really cool. They specialize in auctions. Um, another one that you have to apply to, basically all of these platforms, they're, they're kind of centralized and portaled and gated. You need to apply to all of them. Um, and like the Nifty Gateways, the Super Rares, and this other platform Makerspace, um, I'm going to go to next. Um, I, if you're going to apply, I highly, highly recommend uh, spending time boosting your portfolio, making it look really great. Um, a lot of times right now, the wait times to get on these platforms are one and a half to two months. And a lot of times they won't even send you a rejection notice because there's so many people trying to get on them. So many people applying. Um, it's nothing against your work. It's just a lot of these apps get lost in, in the pipelines. Um, so spend the time, like I can't stress it enough, like don't just try to hop in here and think you're going to make like a quick buck. It's a lot of work. Um, definitely put in the time, like building your social community, like getting involved, like everyone doing this is really awesome, really down to help, really down to talk about it and answer any questions. Um, so just be super cool, genuine and put the work in and you'll probably eventually get accepted. Uh, Maker's Place is another one. Um, this is a, a well-known artist called Marat Singer, I think, Sing, Singer, I think. I'm hopefully not butchering it too much. Um, but he's he's been popular on Vimeo for a couple of years, and he basically published uh, one of his videos. Um, give me one second. Just got to refresh this page. But yeah, so he published uh, a video and the cool thing about Maker's Place is you can do additions. Uh, it doesn't have to be a one of one. It can be uh, multiple. So you can do like additions of five, 10, however many you want. Um, and it's pretty dope. So his video sold for $17,000, I think. 
Um, and I know a lot of the stuff I'm showing you is just like really high priced, like crazy shit. Um, if you look at a lot of the other stuff, there's additions of like a hundred where people are getting bids for like a hundred dollars, 180 bucks. Um, the, the currency of choice is Ethereum. So if you're not familiar with cryptocurrency um, and need to get your foot in the door, um, there's a bunch of guides that I've posted in the Discord I'm going to share at the end. Um, take a look in there. There's stuff about wallet safety, getting started, guides on how to get like where to start and like what you need to do if you're interested in getting involved in the art space. Um, tons of stuff, tons of reading, way more that I can, than I can cover in this call. So this is Maker's Place. This is another one that's pretty hard to, to apply and get into. So I highly recommend taking the time and uh, building out a pretty dope app for this one. Um, Async is really cool. They're, they're a little more niche. Um, and basically what they specialize in is programmable artwork. Um, and basically all of these pieces have some sort of interesting programmable layer to it. Um, I'm not really sure what this one does. It doesn't look like it does anything, to be honest. Um, but basically, you can program different layers, and basically, collectors can buy different layers of the artwork, and they can control every single day um, with a, a small fraction of an expense, uh, which is basically to drive the Ethereum network, um, what is going on in the painting. So let's look at this guy, Brian's. There's three layers. You can see the three layers down here. He's divided it up into three different pieces. This is the final piece. So you can own the master layer, the three individual layers. And then basically it, it allows you to change the states of what's happening in the actual painting. So you kind of become a, a creator indirectly. All right, let's just scroll down. And I actually have a piece on here right now sitting at about uh, 1.6 Ethereum bid. Um, this is a three layer piece. Um, and yeah, basically there's three different layers that people can control. Um, you click on the background, see the layer states, and then it shows you all the different layers that you can pick between and change the artwork. And you can do that as much as any day. And whoever owns the master artwork will see the changes made by the other owners of the pieces. So that's pretty cool, kind of niche. Also another one worth applying if you're super into this kind of stuff. Um, now we're gonna dive into some of the metaverse stuff. Um, again, if you've any, there's a ton more other platforms. There's Known Origin, there's Mint Base, there's Rarible, there's like so many different platforms. All of them are gonna be linked in the Discord so you can take a look. Um, they're all kind of organized there so you can just dig through and kind of get a better idea of what's happening. Um, but basically, there's ones that have like a pretty easy barrier of entry where you don't need to apply. There's other ones that are a little bit harder, uh, but most of the ones that you want to be on, um, you definitely have to apply. It does take time, so I recommend putting in time uh, to your portfolio. Um, but if you're also going to just be a collector, um, anyone can sign up for any of these platforms and just start collecting and buying stuff. Um, you can either keep it on their wallet or if you're familiar with crypto or want to learn about it, um, you can set up your own wallet and actually transfer and hold everything there. Um, it's actually pretty easy nowadays. There's plugins actually that literally just are, are Chrome plugins that hold all your assets, wallets. And basically this is what I use to kind of navigate all the different platforms quickly. All right. Oh, and then let's, it's also worth noting, this is uh, Dead Mouse had a drop a couple of weeks ago. He basically made collectible cards. Um, this is more in line with like the crypto kitties kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of different projects doing really crazy outlandish things like decentralized finance, staking, whatever. We won't get into that. If you want to learn more again, you can peek uh, a lot of the links I'll send later. Um, but yeah, basically he made collector's packs and everyone could buy a pack for like $10. And it came with like six different cards um, with different rarities. Um, and I think he sold like, I don't even know, like five, 6,000 packs. Um, and also gets residual sales from all the individual collectibles that he sells. Um, so he's, he's doing pretty well in this space. All right, now let's get into some cool stuff. Um, so these are metaverse worlds. You can boot, up, boot them up in your browser. A lot of them you don't even need a wallet for. They're basically video game worlds with self-contained blockchain ecosystems. 
Um, a lot of them have art that you can click on. Um, this is an example called Decentraland. It's huge. Like we're just gonna take like quick looks in these, but just to for the scale, I think some of these projects are the size of Manhattan. And basically it's just individual creators and artists coming in and just making whatever they want. Um, if you've ever been to Burning Man and you've just seen like what the playa looks like, you know, everyone's coming and just building ridiculous, crazy, cool, silly stuff. It's kind of like that, um, but you can take it a step further even and create like live stream stadiums, concert stages. Like you can talk to people that you bump into. It's kind of like uh, what Burning Man did for, I don't know if you guys saw any of their metaverse projects where you could pop in, talk to people, hang out. Um, you can do that in all of these projects and there's gambling and there's transacting and all this stuff. Um, this is like a certain arts gallery district. This is actually my gallery. Um, in this space um, and basically this will host a bunch of different artwork at some point um, but you can even click on the individual works i'm not sure if it's going to work right now but yeah when it does work you can click on the individual artworks and actually buy it from directly in these kind of spaces and it also will show you the history of the piece how much it sold for etc um, so this is the central land really cool tons of cool stuff they have like uh, forget the exact, uh, how do I change my third person view? So this is, you You get a character, all the clothing I'm wearing is like an NFT. These are collectibles. They have events where you can collect them. Um, there's avatars that you can make in other worlds that are collectibles that people are buying. I'll show you in a second um, some of those examples, but it's pretty interesting, kind of like hybrid between Second Life and a video game and that kind of stuff. So this is one of them, Decentraland, pretty interesting. Uh, this is another one called Crypto Voxels. Um, and this is more of a Minecraft style world. Um, and this is an art gallery that this guy built. He's a collector, um, well-known collector in the space. And he does different galleries, rotating exhibitions every week. And basically, again, you can click on the work. It'll pop up at some point once the artwork finishes loading and you can buy it transact with it, look at the history of the piece, who's owned it. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting because you can, you can see like the full transparency and price history. So there's no price fixing, which often plagues a lot of the uh, fine art world. So yeah, this is, I mean, this is crypto voxels. It's also, I don't even know how big this is. Um, this, is an, this is another character right here. He's flying around, um, but also kind of like Burning Man, just people have built like every one of these blocks is like a crazy museum or space or live stream thing. They host parties, like concerts, like there's stuff that's like uh, music installation you can program within them. Um, it's it's kind of like a choose your own adventure world. And this little thing we're on right now is just an island. Um, it's like a tiny little island. There's like a whole world of crazy ass cool shit that you can kind of explore. Um, so pretty big crypto voxels, another one really awesome. And you can also just jump in it from your web browser. Um, so it opens up a whole ton of other applications. Like if you want to sell just clothing and stuff, not even crypto related, you can own a parcel in here and basically like put photos of your clothing or build like an immersive showroom and anyone can click and transact and buy your clothing through Shopify and WordPress and stuff directly from within here. So this is crypto voxels, another interesting project. Now let's go into another one called Somnium Space. So this one is, I'd say the craziest graphics wise. Um, oh, it's actually not showing up. Give me one second. I need to change the screen I'm sharing. Give me one second. Somnium Space, cool. So yeah, Somnium Space. So this one is a really high res crypto universe um, where you can actually come boot in in VR as well. It's like a VR world. Um, all of the characters are synced up and rigged to VR. They hold concerts where the characters are like dancing and singing. You can see people dancing, you can talk to them. There's shooting games, there's galleries. Again, you can interact with all of these things. These are like individual artworks you can click on. And after you click on it, it'll show you like the information, how to buy it, et cetera. Um, and also 
it's it's massive like this is just i think a little island but basically you have like a whole world of like immersive 360 degree kind of like videos and experiences like you can basically have like an android jones dome show in this world um, and the other thing that's really dope about it is this is actually an avatar that i created um, and you can create your own avatars in this world and actually sell them um, so right now the average avatar in this this world sells for about between one and two Ethereum, which is about almost, I don't know, like 1500 to $3,000 a piece. So if you're into like character modeling, rigging, that kind of stuff, they have like whole tutorials that you can boot up um, and kind of get going with. Um, these are actually the Beeple pieces. This is like a gallery showing the Beeple artworks that sold for a combined three and a half million dollars a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's huge again, kind of like Playa Burning Man vibes. If you've ever been, um, maybe a little bit more of a, uh, corporate kind of vibe for some of this stuff. Cause there are, there are a lot of ads, but what you can do in these worlds is really, really cool. Especially, uh, with a, a new integration they have called worlds where basically you can buy your own world and basically they give you all the tools to build a multiplayer video game. Um, if you know any sort of scripting. Um, and it's all self-contained. You can basically port into your universe that you build and do anything from like audiovisual concerts to crazy like art things to just like having people like shoot each other and fight and play and whatever. So this is another cool one. It's called Somnium Space. I highly recommend checking it out when you guys get a chance. Um, what time is it right now? 6.30. Cool. So yeah, Somnium Space is pretty dope. Um, Let's take a pause right now and maybe for some questions, if anyone wants to uh, ask any questions, um, kind of touch base on all, I know I'm kind of dumping a lot of information on you guys, but, and I know everyone's kind of from different backgrounds. So I want to make sure, you know, any questions or concerns or things you might be curious about, um, I can answer. Um, I got a quick question. Well, not quick. But um, I'm a bit curious on the whole sales side or let's say opening a shop in these worlds. Mm -hmm. um, so you showed off, I think it was three different worlds, right? So these are three different avatars in three different worlds where artists all advertise their stuff. Um, uh -huh. From my standpoint, I mean, it's amazing. There's a ridiculous amount of potential. However, how do you go about exactly starting a shop let's say in these worlds, cause I'm, I'm personally not an artist, you know that, mm -hmm. um, but I sell collectibles and if right. I wanted to sell physical collectibles in this world and ship these to people uh -huh. rather than having real space in real life, like down the street in an actual store, this sounds like an incredible opportunity without exactly mm -hmm. having to pay rent, which may totally. actually change in the future. It sounds like with these. So how would you even, go about doing that and targeting audiences if you were to invest time and money into building a virtual shop and world how do you do that i mean how do you yeah. actually reach people yeah i so so a lot of this stuff you can just like you can just make it your website like so so one of the things i'm doing right now um, i'm going to be launching a clothing company and i have land and i'm building a virtual showroom and basically when people boot up the website, they're just going to be able to pick like, do you want like the virtual immersive cool kind of shop? Or do you want like the lame, boring, like standard website? Um, an example I can show you actually is uh, on here. This is a clothing company called Elite and they sell physical clothing. This is their little storefront. Um, and you can just walk around and they have like their clothing and stuff in here. I don't know if it's set up, it's, if it's complete just yet, but basically you, you can either build these or hire an artist to construct like voxel things. Like, obviously this is really well done, but a lot of these, uh, these worlds, like, especially this one, crypto voxels, you can just, you build with blocks and they give you a lot of the tools that you need to get started. Um, most of them have builders. Um, if you've ever played the Sims or, anything like that, it's, it's very similar to that, where they give you a bunch of pre-built assets that you can build with. Um, they have tools and like kind of like easy scripting stuff where you can click, uh, click to link. Um, you can add images, um, all that kind of stuff. So even if you have no experience with this stuff, and honestly, most of these people don't, 
They're just like crypto people. Um, some of these projects are like absolutely unbelievable and crazy. Um, and there's actually entire companies built around building these spaces for people. Like there's like architects, this company called uh, Voxel Architects, and they only build like buildings in these worlds, like this piece right here. And they get paid, I, I don't know how much money they get paid, but I can imagine they get paid a, a shit ton of money to build stuff like this. Um, so even if you're an artist who just wants to build weird ass architecture shit, like you can make a lot of money doing that. Um, there's like a ton of different things you can do with it. Um, and if you're trying to build a shop or something or like get people like to a, uh, an alternate store, just do something a little bit different. This is also totally an option. It doesn't even have to be crazy and complicated and it doesn't even have to have a crypto based thing. Um, but one of the ideas that I would play around with is if your customers are interested in like, you know, maybe you do want to get them interested or have like a digital collectible layer to your work. Maybe every collectible that you sell um, every month, you have like a collectible sticker or something that you send to people like a digital sticker. Um, that's something I'm going to be messing around with with this community that I've been talking about a little bit on the discord. Um, where basically, you know, I, I'm not going to say it has any value, but you know that's for everyone else to decide. Um, you know, if you have a company and you make really dope stickers that are collectible, like who knows who's going to buy them. Like if people are spending like tens of thousands of dollars on like cat pixel images and cat art, um, you know, who's to say they're not going to buy your collectibles in the secondary market. Um, and it's just another cool marketing thing you can do for your customers and, and, uh, loyal fans. Um, hopefully that made sense. Another quest. I just have one more question. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's all good. Um, so when you make these shops, is there, and this might sound weird, but based on how this world and the future and whatever this is going for, is there going to be rent that you'll need to pay on these shops? Because you've right. bought so, land, right? So, so if you buy it, if you buy the land, you don't have to pay rent, but you can also buy the land and rent it out to other people. Um, so I actually bought some land in Decentraland, like this project, like five years ago, which at the time was a really stupid investment. Um, but now that land is worth like 20 times what I paid for it, like a couple years ago. Um, I'm not trying to give it financial advice or anything. I think virtual land is really silly and stupid, but that doesn't mean that I haven't bought a shit ton of virtual land. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like part of the things that you know, it really depends on your use case. It really, you really got to believe in this stuff and get into it. Um, part of the thing for me and my reason to buy it was because I wanted a place to display my artwork. And ultimately, like, you know, I'm talking to you guys, onboarding artists into this community and stuff. Like people need a place to display their artwork, especially if they don't maybe want to buy fucking like land. And it's a lot of work to like get in with curators and like collectors who have land and want to feature you and stuff. So part of the thing I'm trying to build into this community that I'm going to be building is like featuring other artists in the community, people that like collaborate and make artwork. Um, that's kind of like what I'm going to use my land for. Uh, but there's, there's not, you can use your land for whatever you want to do. You want to rent it, someone will rent it from you. Uh, if you don't want to use the land thing and you just want to rent from someone else, you can probably do that too. Um, a lot of these places also like there's, there's groups that are just like really wealthy crypto people that buy up a bunch of land and they actually grant out their land to particular artists who apply. Um, so just like kind of applying for uh, government funds in the pandemic, you can apply for virtual land to, to have your gallery and <laughs> um, I've got a question if, if I can go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thanks for teaching us all this stuff, by the way. It's really insane. Yeah, dude. Anytime. I've, uh, yeah, I've started to see, like, on Instagram and in people's bios, they're just putting links to their work, like, on Super Rare and those kind of sites. So, yeah. Um, so, I was looking at them, but I'm just, like, wondering, uh, like, do people only buy your work if you're well known? And, like, what makes your art worthy? And what sites should you should you try to sell your stuff on? Totally. That's a great, great question. Um, a lot of the numbers that I've shared that you're going to see online, um, 
it, it, it can be a pipe dream in a lot of senses, but that's not to discourage anyone because in this space, if you put in the work and you connect with people, connection is so huge. Like, I don't, I, I'm not like affiliated with the fine art world at all, really. Um, but I can't imagine it. Like, it, I guess to a certain degree, it's about who you know and the connections you build and the networking. And the great thing about this space is since it's virtual, most of the connecting happens via Clubhouse, via like other Discord channels. Like there's tons of groups, tons of communities. There's stuff on Twitter. There's like crazy, crazy amounts of places. And all you need to do is just put in the time. Like there's really no substitute for like putting in time to like build out your best work, share it with people. Like I would encourage you to start small and not get really crazy and just get your work in the hands of like collectors. Like, even if that means like, you know, pricing your work very, very low um, at the start, I think everyone has to start somewhere. And that's ultimately where I ended up starting. And over the course of like three, four months, like in that three or four month time span of working every fucking day, shit tons of hours, all be trying to be all over Twitter and like, play play the game and like talk to as many people as possible i'm just starting like i finally have been accepted to almost all of the platforms um with the exception of super rare and nifty gateway because nifty gateway only does drops um but even then it's just important like to not get discouraged if you do get rejected keep trying keep applying there's new platforms coming out every single day and there's a ton of them linked in uh, the discord channel that i'm going to share um finding a niche and finding things that you excel at and finding even just like five collectors who love your work and want to connect with you and coming up with really creative ways to like be different and stand out and be unique. I would say that is worth the time and uh, putting in um, and just emphasis. Don't get discouraged. If you get rejected from any of these platforms, like at the start, if you look at a lot of them, there's a lot of really insanely talented people and a lot of the platforms are looking for social reach right now. So if you don't have thousands of like followers and stuff, it's even that much harder. But again, just put in the time, make your work look good. It's a great excuse. Like there, there's no rush on this. Like crypto markets go through cycles every couple of years. Right now it happens to be high. Who's to say it's not gonna be high. It, it might not be high in a couple months. So it's something you really need to believe in you need, really need to believe in like what's happening in the space and like the future of digital art, physical art, this like blend that we're gonna be having between art and video games and like technology that's going to happen over the next 10 years. Um, just if you believe in the vision, then it's worth the time. If you're just trying to make a quick buck, you know, I'm not gonna discourage you from doing it, but it's definitely something that requires time. Yeah, I don't even get the vision fully yet, so I'm so, still trying so, to grasp it. But yeah. So really quickly, let, so when we look at technology and what's happening, and I can share some crazy stuff that you'll see. I don't know if anyone has seen like these digital art displays and stuff that are existing or these light field displays. Um, that's kind of where we're moving with with some of these artworks, especially for digital artwork. Now you can display like like you would a painting in your home, a digital piece of artwork. And that doesn't have to hold just a single piece of artwork. It can actually hold your entire wallet of artworks and you can program in with different apps, how often it rotates, et cetera. And it looks just like a painting with the exception it might move. Um, so I'm, I'll, I'll actually share that just in a moment. But when you think about where we're headed with VR, with augmented reality, like smartphones technology, like, I would say within a decade, you know, you've, you've seen products like the Google Glass, like there's like these augmented reality headsets, like where is our world going? Like I personally think within like 10, 15 years, everyone can be wearing a pair of glasses. That's your smartphone. It's your fucking iPod. It's your, you know, it's your everything. Like you'll be walking down the street and you'll maybe have your text messages in the corner of your eye. I'm not saying this is like what I'm praying for. It's kind of disgusting, but ultimately this is what I think is going to happen. And when you have a digital lens over your entire world, you can put anything in it. Like you can be walking around in like a Pokemon world if you want to. Like, but how do you get the Pokemon in your world? You buy them because they're collectible things. So this is where it starts getting really crazy. Like 
this, these collectible art pieces are just the start. Like you have these companies called NBA Top Shot, which is an officially licensed NBA collectible company that literally just has like a, a card frame around it, like a Pokemon card and like a video of a basketball player. And I think some LeBron James piece just sold for like 77 grand the other day. And it's just a collectible uh, basketball video. Um, so like digital collectibles, video game things, like you're gonna start having these things. There's platforms building out uh, collectibles that are cross chain and cross platform. And they're integrating with platforms and like game builders like Unity so you can have an item or a thing in one game or in the real world, and it'll actually also transfer into other games and other worlds. Um, especially as we get crazier and crazier in the virtual like universe, like virtual avatars are gonna be a thing like this year. Like a lot of celebrities are already jumping on these projects where they basically like turn your character into an avatar and people can buy your avatar. The other huge thing that's happening right now, which is kind of the project I'm working on, and hopefully you all are interested in join, um, is social tokens. Basically bands, like brands, people distributing the wealth of their brand and their company and their identity to a community that's completely decentralized and basically rewarding people with either digital collectibles, real items, merch, et cetera, music, um, that are redeemable only for these tokens. Um, so you have bands like Portugal the Man, my favorite band, <laughs> uh, just released their own community token last week, um, where basically like by buying their into their token in their community, now I can talk to them in their Discord channel. It's more personal than like TikTok and like Instagram. Uh, it's also like there's a paywall, like a barrier of entry. So if you don't own the token, you can't get in, which means less spammers, higher quality content, et cetera. And they've already sent out to like token holders, like a live, like an archive of every live show and recording they've ever done, all their unreleased music. Like soon you can buy their like albums and merch. And like one of the guys does artwork, you can buy it with the token. So that's what this year is going to be about. It's going to be about a lot of these groups jumping in and like so doing social tokens, Grammatic did it a couple years ago. Um, there's a group called RAC, uh, this musician who's tokenizing his work and basically all royalties from his, his music that sell are distributed to his token holders. Um, essentially, it's like a stock, you can think of it, um, except the, the owner, instead of it being a company or a corporation, it's an individual or an idea. Um, and there's a lot you can do with it. Like really like the sky's the limit. Like there, there's no rule book on what you can do with these projects. Um, so if anyone's actually interested in like social tokens and stuff, again, it'll be also be in the discord. There'll be some apps that you can like go to, to apply and get started with that. Um, like I applied two weeks ago for, for this community social token and I got accepted. And now I own like 10 million tokens of my own cryptocurrency, which a couple of years ago would have been like totally insane. And I probably would have been audited by the SEC. Um, give me one second. I know we just had another questions. That sounds uh, like so we, Bowie bonds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David yeah. Bowie did that. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, going to say it's sports is big because they also are doing a lot of social tokens for like the European soccer teams and stuff. So, yep. Really cool. Yeah, I mean, all the game companies are going to get in on this. Like, there's another company called Flow that they're the ones who do NBA Top Shot. They're the ones who do Crypto Kitties. They just released a new platform for artists as well. There's a company called Terra Virtua, which specializes in like television content. And so, like, all the TV shows that you watch, like through Sony, um, I think like The Abyss or The Expanse is one of the examples I'll use. Um, basically all of the assets that they use in filming the movie are now like collectibles. So you can buy the 3D characters and they even have these little virtual like rooms that you get when you sign up for an account that you can put all your collectibles in and hang out in, in like VR, et cetera. Um, all right, one, one more so slightly corporate from what you're doing. Have you heard of our Snapchat local lenses? Uh, is that like the glasses with the no it's an ar thing where that's location based so like artists have been putting up things in certain locations so you go there with your phone and like look at the art so they're paying artists for that yeah, yeah jeff, so, jeff so, coons yeah. did that 
Well, so so I was going to say the next layer of that, which is just the obvious evolution of all this, is this is actually a project I'm working on with a company called Versus right now, um, where what if, yeah, like Snapchat has this thing. It's like, cool, I go and I go to this piece and I see this artist like 3D floating piece. Like I know Cause has a, a, a partnership right now with an AR company where you can see his floating characters in various cities and stuff. And sorry, Sharon, I'll give me one second. I saw your question. I'm going to get to it just in a moment. Um, so the next step of this is you go to this place and you engage with this artwork in that's completely invisible to the real world. But as soon as you have this digital lens over it, like maybe if you're one of the first hundred people to get to this spot, you get a digital collectible in your wallet of that artwork. And so can you imagine like what sort of frenzy this is going to cause? Like we saw the Pokemon Go frenzy where like everyone was just like hopping around, like going to gas stations and like, I don't know, you would just like be driving around the city and see like 50 people posted up with their phones up, just going crazy over something that's worth nothing. Like literally the Pokemon were worth nothing. Now, as soon as you apply a value to that, can you imagine how insane some of this shit is gonna be? It's gonna be nuts. So that's, that's where we're headed. I think the next step this next year is gonna be social tokens, art, digital art collectibles, and eventually like location-based collection and events. Like there's no reason like large scale festivals and events can't have things that you can check in at and get like collectibles. Um, so, so just to answer Sharon's question really quick, she had a question about selling vintage or antique artwork. So Sharon, um, yes, you can do this. It works a little bit differently. There are platforms for this. And I think the strongest things that you would want to integrate, because I'm not sure if they want to like animate their artwork or get like crazy. There are platforms that uh, authenticate physical artwork and that's all they do. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the big problems in the art world is forgery, like faking certain pieces of work. Um, there's no certificate a lot of times. You don't know if the piece you're buying is real. And so what a lot of artists are doing now, um, I just actually was checking out this piece by Daniel Arsham. He's authenticating his artwork now with blockchain. And so he's partnered with a company that basically all they do is just blockchain certificates. Um, and there's another company called Verisart. Also, all of these companies will be in the link or you can send, you can ping me and I'm happy to send you all these links. Um, basically all of these companies uh, just specialize in either creating like verified ledgers of artworks um, so that you can track the history, who's owned it, what the prices were, the authenticity, et cetera. Um, and a lot of times you can even like design a cool certificate. So if you're working with like either vintage pieces of work, it might be hard if you can't contact the original artist, but partnering as like a middleman with an original artist to get their work certified and authenticated and published through systems like this is super important because that ensures that it's actually going to, you know, people can buy it with like uh, peace of mind knowing it's not fake. So hope hope that answered your question. Thank you. I have a, I have have a, a question. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, Sorry, yeah, I'm just gonna jump in here because there, yeah, there's, um, I feel like there's a piece of this that I'm not understanding and maybe it's just that I am so, uh, uh, I'm so ignorant about about crypto, um, but like how do you, like within, for interactive artworks, I kind of understand um, these concepts, but if if you're talking about something that's just like a still image or audio, like how, what, what, what about the DRM problem of someone just like taking a screenshot or capturing the audio or video stream? Like people might not care whether they have the like authenticated version. They just want to see the bootleg or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it cheapens the value. So like, I, yeah. Can you speak a little bit about that? Totally. So yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, and that's, that's really the big question. Like why, what makes this worth money? Um, and it, it's like I mentioned at the beginning, it's it, and just kind of was talking about with Sharon, um, it's the certificate. The certificate proves that it's the original and it's the scarce version. So if you get, let me, let me use an example. So you have two paintings. One of them is an original painting by uh, an artist. 
And then I go to your house and I'm like, damn, this is a dope painting. And I just snap a photo and like take like a high res printout and like put that on my wall as well. The printout isn't actually worth any money. The physical piece is worth money, but I could also just as easily, maybe not just as easily, but maybe I'm just like a master painter. And I'm like, damn, that was so cool. I'm going to paint the same exact thing and put that on my wall. I could sell that and it could be totally fake and someone wouldn't know the difference and might buy it. Like, you know, in sports, sports uh, memorabilia, like collectible cards, like artwork, like forgery is like an insanely crazy thing. Um, and a lot of times the forgeries are so good, you can't tell the difference. But what makes it special and what gives the piece of value is proving that it's real. And that ultimately is, I don't want to say is what gives an artwork the value it has, but to a degree, um, it does. Like if you can prove that something's real and someone else who's like a master can say, this is real, this is the original, that is actually what's applying the value to it. Unless, you know, you're, you've a direct line with the artist and they're like, oh yeah, that is the original piece. Like if you own a Kobe Bryant signed jersey um, and it's authenticated by like upper deck, um, anyone can forge like an upper deck certificate of authenticity or like a serial number. But if you email upper deck and have them look up in their records, if it's real, they'll write you back and be like, yes, it's real. So the difference between it is, yeah, I, I guess the certificate ultimately proving the authenticity, which is what sure. you get with the blockchain. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand, I understand that for a lot of people that, um, yeah, that authenticity is like the thing they really care about. But take, for ex example, the the example of someone who's just like, you know, they're a fan of Portugal the Man, and yeah. um, and they just want to see like you know one of these concerts that was released, but they don't care whether they go through the platform and it's authenticated or whatever. Like, that's the part that I'm still not quite understanding is why like for why is it worth it for someone like a band? to release artwork in this format when their fans just want to hear the music. Their fans are not art collectors, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it's so easy just to capture that file and distribute it in ways that are not tracked on the blockchain. Right, so, so yeah, that's totally understandable. Um, it's complicated. I think it's knowing your audience. And I think the trends that have been gaining momentum in the last few years is people want more out of their engagement, whether it's through social media, whether it's people they follow, like what is the next layer? And like, what is that next step of engagement? How can I own a piece of the band? How can I like be even more ingrained in this thing that I'm obsessed with? And it's collectibles. It doesn't matter if it has value or anything. It's just, it goes back to like the video game concept where like you want your character to just look cool or there's items that people are like, oh, this is collectible and special in the game. Um, even if it has no value, just because you don't necessarily think it has value, someone else might think it has value. Um, I hope that answered the question a little bit. I think so. So with regards to like communities and like bands and brands and people like wanting to get more invested in like a brand, they buy stickers sometimes like merch stores uh, for a lot of artists do incredibly well. Um, you know, just because like, I love like Portugal, the man doesn't necessarily mean that I am going to buy all their stickers. Like if they had like a sticker drop every month, doesn't mean I'm going to buy their, their sticker every month, but there's this huge culture shift happening right now. And it's like, it kind of, to a degree, it like skips, skips over my head, <laughs> but millennials like Gen Z people, like are very plugged into the internet and they love collecting things. You know, it goes back to like Pokemon cards and stuff or like magic cards or like even sports cards and it's like stuff before that. Like it's really just cardboard. Like it's something that has no inherent value to it at the end of the day. Like it's, it's a piece of paper that's printed on. But somewhere along the line, someone obsessed over it hard enough to be like, look, this has value. Like this is worth something now. And I think just the natural progression in collectibles, in like bands and like all this stuff and like artists even are doing these drops for their work. It's just a new way of like selling things that like builds hype and builds authentic and uh, anticipation. I think the next natural progression is just like this. Um, I'm not saying, you know, 
I think it is still kind of crazy that we're like making this jump from like a physical thing to a digital thing. But at the end of the day, like a Pokemon card is just a piece of cardboard. Like whether it's like a piece of cardboard in the real world or like a bunch of pixels on a computer, I think there isn't like a huge difference in that. There's no value to either of them, really. It's just the value that other people attach to it. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I think I understand a bit better now. Yeah, thanks. And I think like, particularly the ban question is also just going back to the social environment. Let's say they're doing a Zoom like this, right? And they know that the only people who can come are people who've put money into one of our collectibles. The crowd is going to be just different, right? There's not going to be anybody willingly joining in and chiming. They know that these people are going to be more engaged. So I think that would be something for the band. Um, yeah, and, and I was just going to add really quickly uh, a great message from Keith uh, as well. Um, part of it's just like people, people want to be seen owning this stuff too. I'm, I'm just reading through it while I'm talking. So give me a second to make sure I understood what you said. Yeah, so, so part of the hype around this is like all of it's transparent. You know who owns the piece. You know who's buying it. You can see like who your fans are. It's being seen by the people selling these things. And in the inverse, like people seeing you uh, as like an artist or a creator. Um, like, like a lot of these collectors are just buying a lot of these works because they want to be seen supporting the arts or supporting people they care about or like making a big statement out of it. It like makes them happy. It makes the artists happy. Like that's why Twitter's like so like bumping right now with these people. There's like a huge dialogue going on. If you look up just like NFT art or crypto art on Twitter, like a lot of it's just like collectors and artists like having this like crazy social interaction. Um, and a lot of times in the in the real art world, like maybe you don't have that. Maybe you meet up with them once at a gallery showing, you shake hands and whatever. But now that you have these like communities or like social media, like a lot of these people are like meeting up with their collectors, like having like real relationships with them. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a beautiful thing. It's, it's a really, I would say like a very nurturing and like open and cool community um, in that sense. I think the other side to this, you know, is going back to that question before. Um, and this is how I can relate it. You're dealing with as of right now, a very niche group of people. These are people that want rare stuff. They don't, I mean, sure, there's going to be knockoffs of everything. I'm literally selling a Joker figure right now. Exact same thing. One's $100, one's $1,000. It is literally a knockoff. And even though both are available, people are buying the $1,000 one because there's a brand next to it. At the yep. end of the day, you're trying to appeal to collectors that, like Kyle said, are making a statement. And a collector doesn't want to own something knowing it's a knockoff. Yes, there are people that are fine with the knockoff, but the community you're targeting are people that want the very best and they want the absolute rarest thing possible. I don't think people are going to settle in the end for a knockoff versus mm -hmm. that sort of authenticity, which, I mean, we grew up with it with sports memorabilia. Without that certificate of authenticity, nobody wants to look at your product. They don't care if you have a picture of Kobe signing that jersey and all the Lakers were around it dancing and whatever, if you don't have a cert of authenticity, that's a $5 jersey with someone's name on it. <laughs> I'm having that issue right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now, I mean, I guess the other cool part about that is like, damn, like I have like a signed Kobe jersey with no certificate of authenticity because I lost it. So I'm basically screwed and it's worth nothing. But if the certificate was digital the entire time, you know, maybe it doesn't get burned down in a house fire or like lost or like maybe I'm moving. Like at the end of the day, it's just like a piece of paper, but it's like that is essentially like pretty valuable in itself. I do have a I know, really... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say really quickly, I know we're getting close to the, we're a little over time. We can keep talking. I'm totally stoked. For anyone that is crunched on time and has to hop off, I highly, highly, highly encourage uh, everyone check out the Discord link I just sent. Like, if you want to get familiar in the smallest sense with cryptocurrency and like what's happening, 
click the link, it'll walk you through a little process where you can claim like 50 eBear tokens, which is my social community token. Um, you can hop on the Discord. There's, <laughs> this is my plug for the call. You can hop on, there's tons of channels for artists, collectors, ask questions, like there's tiers. We're gonna have like really crazy shit. I don't even know what we're gonna have yet, but I just wanna keep the dialogue going with people. If you have any questions, like I'll be on it all the time. I'm on Discord, like and a ton of other groups all the time. Um, so if you're a creator, a collector, or just someone interested in the space, um, hop on. There's gonna be hopefully a lot going on in the group. And I have a lot of other artists and like professionals who are gonna be joining to answer questions um, and kind of offer um, any sort of like guidance, insight or whatever. So it should be a cool place to just like talk about this kind of stuff and hang out. Um, and there's no, no pressure to be active or anything. You can totally just watch and like hold the token too. Thanks bro. Yeah. Thanks for your time. And yeah, of course. Also if awesome anyone else has questions, like I'm gonna hang out too. Um, probably for like another 20 minutes. So if anyone has any other questions, feel free to ask them. If you need to hop off, you can also hop off. Yeah, I have a quick one. So um, you mentioned the platforms and I think not one was name base. Is it the same uh, one Nifty that does Gateway? that? It was Nifty Gateway, Super Rare and Maker's Place. Maker's Place, I see, okay. I thought I heard namespace because that, that was also uh, decentralized domains. I was like- Yeah, I no, there's- there's a lot of different platforms. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Similar names. Yeah, and, and really nice. I mean, like, I'm so happy for you now killing it because I know you're putting a lot of time and effort into this. So that's what's up. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. If you if you put in a lot of work in the space, there's a lot of really cool things happening. There's other galleries, there's other like things. Um, I'm if, if anyone's interested, there's a really cool show coming up called uh, F Denver, Ethereum Denver. Um, Scarlett actually connected me with uh, this lovely lady named Annie, um, who's curating it. Wait, and basically, they're gonna. Something. Sorry, what was that? Oh, sorry, I was unmuted accidentally. All good. Yeah, no, you're all good. Um, so yeah, so there's there's gonna be like multiple galleries in different metaverses with over I think there's like 50 artists. Some of them minting their first pieces. Some of them not. Um, there'll be auctions. There'll be cool stuff. Scarlett just sent the link over really really cool people really awesome stuff happening they're going to have like an augmented reality layer as well um and then also coming up like low-key there'll be a project with a project there, there's this program called octane render um, by a company named otoy and they basically power almost i would say most of the motion graphics and 3d work that you see they plug into most of the main softwares and they specialize in graphics rendering um, they have a blockchain project called Render Token, um, which allows decentralized uh, rendering. Um, so I'll be one of the artists um, for a, a big initiative that they have with the Open Earth Foundation, um, where we're going to be doing a fundraiser for Open Earth Foundation um, on Nifty Gateway um, that basically is fundraising for a, a sustainable model and software that tracks um, carbon emissions. Yeah, so that's that's so, my pitch. That's my that's me talking about me. You clearly are doing nothing with your time. I'm bored. I'm really bored. So how can we follow slash invest in your art? Because you are one of those incoming artists. I know, I know, but I actually like your art and I do want one on my wall. So how can I buy your art and follow for drops and stuff? Cause I've already, I see the bids on your pieces <laughs> and they're getting a little yeah. out of my price range. Josh, you get, you get a family discount. Um, but most days uh, I'm active mostly on Twitter nowadays um, at Kyle Gordon art. Um, anywhere on social media, I'm at Kyle Gordon art nowadays. Um, you can follow the adventure. I'm usually sharing a lot of different cool projects and stuff on Twitter. Um, Instagram's cool, but I'm not really posting too much on there unless I have like a new piece coming out. Um, Twitter is a little better for like uh, streams of consciousness I'm finding. And the Discord group. You'll hear it first from the Discord group. Anyone else got any? I had a question. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it might be a very newbie question. I am, 
I, I don't know much about this space uh, except for what you just uh, told cool. us. That's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was wondering, is there uh, is there limitations in terms of the kinds of art and formats that we can um, share in this way that we need to be aware of? Is it platform dependent? Is it you know limitation of crypto art? Uh, yeah, anything like can I share a full video game this way, for example? Totally. That's that's an awesome question. Um, so yeah, so technical limitations vary from platform to platform. I think the standard is file size right now. Like that, that's the biggest limitation and it varies between 50 to hundred megabytes at most. Um, so depending on what you're uploading for the, for the most part, you should be okay with like a, a high res MP4 file. Um, if it's really long, it might get a little tricky and you might have to compress it a little bit more. Um, but depending on the platform, most of them support video now. A lot of them support 2D images. A lot of them even support 3D models now, um, as well as like those in-game kind of metaverse things you saw. You can actually sell items um, or wearables as like 3D Vox models um, on a lot of these platforms. Um, another one that I forgot to mention is OpenSea. They actually have free minting. If you do end up getting really involved in the space, um, you are going to want to get at least a, a base level understanding of like crypto and wallets and Ethereum. Um, it's kind of like real dollars. You just need to transfer it into like this digital token. And basically the way you mint pieces or like send things is by sending a fractional, like a very small transaction fee. Um, right now it's actually not very small. It's very high. Uh, the transaction fees. So I recommend using platforms that have free uh, minting fees, they're called. And there's a lot of them. Um, they're actually listed, they'll be listed on the Discord. There's a bunch of them. So if you have any questions about any of them or just want to like poke around, they're all there. Got it. And yeah. actually one thing that you said, you you were mentioning about some, uh, some artists that actually made, like made it possible to join them and maybe in some in like live interaction. Um, by holding a token and that actually is very isn't it very like i think you know we also talked about how one could like take a screenshot of an art piece right and then like you duplicate it the way other people could consume it but if if you can't join say a, a video stream without a token then that actually becomes like uh impossible to access because you yeah. can't just share links and passwords with people then so that actually like does get a boost yeah. in terms of you're you know. you're right on the money. That's that's exactly what's happening. That's the whole reason these social tokens exist, especially for bands and a lot of stuff. Like one of the things Portugal the Man is doing in their Discord is if you hold a certain amount of tokens, um, you get access to special channels where they do album listenings or just like live streams. Um, really, when you think about like what a lot of this could replace is like a standard Patreon model where you're kind of just subscribing for like features and content. Um, I think like, especially for live stream stuff or like videos or like things that like work in progress, especially if you're like an artist or a creator and you want to give your collectors added value from owning a piece, there's no reason you can't create your own token or even the owning. So even owning a token, like an artwork or a digital piece can, act, can grant you access to certain things. Um, that's the next step. So a lot of the things that they're integrating now is if you own a token or a collectible, or in Josh's case, maybe he wants to send out uh, stickers to anyone who buys a collectible statue from his like web company or web store. Um, basically, anyone who has that sticker can now enter a private room or like chat room, etc., for like maybe first dibs on new items or drops or album listening stuff, um, really the applications get really crazy. And like I was saying, it's so new that like, there's no rule book on really what you can do with it. And if you have cool ideas, a lot of these platforms are like looking for cool ideas and will work with you. Like I, I haven't found uh, like an industry where I've just been able to contact all the like creators of the platforms and just talk directly with them and just have like a direct line with them being like, hey, I have this idea, like, could you guys do this? And then being like, yeah, I think we could like work that in. Like I know Berto has uh, has experience with that in some of the like softwares that we work in. Um, I, I never got in like he did. He's, he's just a ninja and he's awesome. But um, 
yeah, you can, you can talk, like if you have a cool idea and all, a lot of these platforms are down to work with you. That's really cool. Exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so I know you showed off like three worlds, um, for these video games that you can kind of walk in and see galleries and all that. Um, but for each platform you were on, they looked like they all were different in their own right. For example, I know that last one, you said that was your avatar that you made looked like a little Evangelion unit. Um, um, so my question is, how do you decide what, which one of these worlds is where you should start building for what you're doing? Like is a certain platform, platform better for live streams? Is one better for digital art galleries? One better for physical stores? Yeah. That's, that's a great question. And I think it just comes down to barrier of entry and who your customer is. So in your case, your customers probably aren't people who want to boot up a, a heavy PC application every time they want to visit your store. Um, so barrier of entry is huge. So Somnium Space, while it's the best for live streaming and concerts, et cetera, um, it's for PC and you need to have an app downloaded and it updates a bunch. Whereas Decentraland is probably the one, the first one that I showed that like looks the second nicest and is the most developed. However, you need a crypto wallet to connect to it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a huge thing. You don't even have to hold any money, but you do need a wallet to connect to it. Actually, correction, um, Somnium Space, the, the one that looks really great, actually just released a, a web feature. So now you can send anyone to your space if you own a piece of land. Uh, the limitations are it's only your land. It's not the whole world, but anyone can like go in on the web and walk around and talk to people or like view what's happening in there. Um, so that, that would be an easy barrier of entry. So that would be one I would recommend for like your stuff. The other one would be crypto voxels, which was the boxy one that I kind of showed, mm -hmm. um, which is just the lightest and it loads the quickest. Um, at the expense of looking like Minecraft garbage. <laughs> now, do you so that, have that to use? Change too. Now, do you have to use cryptocurrencies with each of these worlds, or are they integrated yet to where you can be like, oh, pay with PayPal or Amazon or credit card? So, so most of them you need to pay in cryptocurrency, but okay. it's it's really, really, it's it's so easy nowadays to like buy cryptocurrency Just and get set it. up yeah like it, it used to be really complicated and yes it's kind of crazy sending stuff between wallet addresses but everyone here has a smartphone and has signed up for accounts and been to some degree like savvy with technology i guarantee you can do it all you have to do is like sign in to like cash app coinbase gemini square make an account click the coin you want to buy buy it and then you just install like uh a web browser wallet like MetaMask, highly recommend MetaMask. It's not going to keep your money safe, like very safe from hackers and stuff, but that's like a whole other discussion. You should look up crypto wallet security, how you should have safer wallets, hardware wallets, et cetera. But MetaMask, you just click your address, send it there. And now you can literally plug into any of these worlds and you have money to spend um, and you're good to go. Yeah, w one quick note on the PayPal yeah. front is they actually uh, do crypto now and yeah. either this month or next month, you're going to be able to now buy uh, uh, things online with PayPal with crypto. Yep. Um, yep. So I've been doing a lot of crypto stuff myself as well. A lot of decentralized DeFi coins and things like that. Yes. Um, you know, like if, if you guys want to make a lot of money, like Kyle said, we're not financial advisors here. <laughs> uh, definitely check out uh, DeFi coins. Um, one of them that's really interesting is Decentraland Mana. Uh, so you can buy the Mana coin and that's what you use to buy things within Decentraland. Um, pretty interesting, like I bought a bunch of them for like seven cents like a month ago. They're about like 18 cents now. I mean, it's cents, it's not like I'm getting rich or anything like that, but it's very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting to, to see, you know, major, um, you know, companies like PayPal accepting crypto now, whereas before people were like, oh, it's just like a virtual currency. It's not worth anything. But, um, you know, if PayPal is accepting this now and, and you know, be, you can pay with crypto, it's 
becoming mainstream today. So yeah. Totally. And, and again, just crypto is a highly volatile, uh, risky asset to be dabbling in. And this whole space is super inflated to begin with. We don't know what it's worth. It could be worth nothing. It could be worth a lot more money. Um, so it might crash and that would affect the valuations of everything. But at the end of the day, like the prices adjust um, and it's super niche and it's, it's here to stay. Um, the people who are like buying the stuff really believe in it. And it's just going to get crazier as PayPal is adopting all this crypto stuff. I'm sure soon on a lot of these platforms, you can actually just buy this stuff with your credit card. You don't even need crypto. Um, so that's where we're headed. It's going to be like a mix of like credit card, PayPal, crypto, pay in the currency you want. Granted, our government doesn't like completely like shut it down. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, uh, it, it's just going to get crazier. I think the technology is just, it's still in its infancy and it's still like has a long way to go. Um, but if you kind of like believe in like the vision and like really are like nerding out and loving all this weird tech art game stuff, um, it's worth looking into. Don't quit your day job though, you know. What day job? <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So yeah. Uh, anyone else have any other questions before we tie off? I mean, since we are touching on this topic of the the tokens, so how would you evaluate? So obviously. Mana will be a really good one, is a really popular one. How would you evaluate some other tokens um, and versus, let's say, just buying some land on the central land? Um, mm -hmm. And then I know, like, Kyle, we've talked about engine a bunch and we have mm -hmm. some bags in that. But how do you, how do you essentially, if you were to pick, let's say, three relevant tokens, how would you rank them versus also maybe buying virtual land? Yeah, so, so it's a, for, for me personally, I didn't think I was going to buy more virtual land this year. Um, it's, I would say it's half investment, half utility. Like I actually have real world use cases I want to use them for. I want to use them for the community. I want to host other people's artwork, my own artwork, create an e-commerce store, like do different things with it. So from that perspective, it's, it's an interesting investment on my end, because even if it's worthless, I'll still get some utility out of it. Um, with regards to it just being, uh, and I'll get to your question in just a second, Keith. Um, with regards to like investing in like the currencies of these platforms or the land, I think you just need to do your research on like which of these projects are like the most built out, have the most potential, are doing things differently, uniquely. There's tons of articles comparing all of them. There's even other ones that exist now called Sandbox. You have the other blockchain games as well. You can buy land, you can do all this stuff, but it's less about like art and more about games. It's really about what you enjoy and what you're gonna do. Um, I can't tell you which is going to be like the winner. In, in a lot of cases, they might all be the winners. Um, a lot of the things they're talking about right now is cross-platform interoperability. Um, so basically allowing your items or things to carry over between worlds. Um, so if you build a gallery in one space, I actually had a call with a guy two days ago who is builds like a shipping container in one world and is doing demos where that shipping container basically loads into another world as well because at the, at the end of the day it's just a 3d model that he built or a thing that he created in one world and all of them are just 3d models um, with regards to like in investing in the coins right now i'm not really investing in too many of the the platform coins because i have the land and it's like if the if the platform does well the land will increase in value um, the the coins that do interest me though in the space are the ones that are building the tools um, for the future, for other companies to do this stuff. That's why I really like Engine. Um, they're building basically like payment gateways and like blockchain compatibility directly into Unity and Unreal Engine. So video game developers can just integrate like their own in-game currency and ecosystem, um, even if it's not necessarily a blockchain game. 
Um, and yeah, I, I, I've been really into any of the the companies that are also like coming up with new ways to keep like fees down for like minting stuff. Um, I like Flow is another new project that, that's really interesting. They actually just launched their artist marketplace today. And there are the people who built Crypto Kitties and NBA Top Shots. Um, and now they're doing art stuff as well. Um, so I would say like finding platforms that you really like and use a lot, that's probably a good uh, foundation for where you should put, put some money if you're interested in doing that. Um, otherwise, I would wholeheartedly, if you're a creator, just invest the money in yourself or like buying things that add more utility to your artwork that you're gonna be uh, promoting within the space, such as land, um, maybe renting land. Um, yeah, stuff like that. I hope that answered your question, Takbor. And then let me just get to Keith's question really quick. I'm just gotta pull it up. So for, for this sort of thing, Keith, I'm not gonna lie, Instagram uh, is not important at all. <laughs> and I think most, most of the artists in the space will actually share that sentiment. Um, the reason being is most people on Instagram don't understand this yet. Um, as more celebrities pile in and start building out their social tokens and ecosystems and, you know, most of the artists that are actually sharing their Instagram metrics about like super rare and like posting artworks on these platforms actually have less engagement because the people just don't understand it and are like, oh, these people crypto sellouts uh, and they're just doing some weird Ponzi scheme stuff, um, which really isn't the case. This is really the beginning of the future of digital art. Um, and collecting digital art at, at the very minimum, just for like artists. Um, and right now the place to be is Twitter um, because that's where all the collectors are. That's where all the crypto and blockchain people are. Um, and maybe that'll change in the future. Um, and also the other place people are in social groups. Discord is huge, Telegram groups, huge. Um, all the platforms have discords and Telegram groups. Um, and some of them even have WhatsApp groups. You just need to be in all of them, to be completely honest, especially if you're starting out and just sharing your work, talking to people, making acquaintances, becoming friends. Um, you never know who you're going to talk to. Um, yeah, that's that's all I can say on that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have any other questions? What uh, what blockchains are, are these things all happening on? That's a great question, question Jonathan. Um, so yeah, right now, most of these, I would say 90% of these things are on Ethereum. Um, in some ways, it's great. In some ways, it's not. Right now, Ethereum is just the most widely used platform in the space, um, which is great uh, to a degree. Uh, that's not to say it's going to be the winner long term. We don't know who the winner is going to be. Um, maybe there will be solutions for Bitcoin that come out that allow apps. Um, there's other companies building their own blockchains to handle all this to keep fees down. Um, part of the, I mean, part of the problem with all of these projects being on Ethereum means the network's very congested, which means it's really expensive to transact right now. Um, you can dive into all the goodness about gas prices and transacting uh, from the Discord channel links. Um, but yeah, it's expensive to mint, it's expensive to transact or do anything because all of the decentralized finance projects, all of the NFT art projects, and then all the Ethereum projects and coins are all on the same platform. Um, so there's companies building out uh, solutions to help scale that and offload some of the, like, uh, the issues with that right now. Um, some of them allowing free minting, some of them allowing free transactions. Um, others are saying uh, that Ethereum will eventually uh, outgrow these problems. Um, and then others are just building their own blockchains. Um, so I don't know if Ethereum is going to be the long-term winner. Um, right now, it definitely is for all of this stuff. Um, but I don't think there's a reason all of them can't exist. Um, I think there's going to be pros and cons to each of them. But right now... Um, Ethereum is powering almost, it's powering all the metaverse worlds that I showed you, um, as well as most of the platforms. Uh, 
Alrighty, any last questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace. You'll just have to ask questions on the Discord channel. I did. Um, I did try to create that roll or rolly account. That you, uh, I think it's roll. Uh huh. Uh, the roll wallet. Uh, try uh -huh. roll. Um, but when I created it, when I tried creating it, um, it just keeps on giving me an error. I'm not sure if it's something that, you know, when you create the the wallet, does that take time to create the wallet? Do you get an automatic um, uh, email or something like that, or does it just pop in overnight? Um, you can, we can just hang back for a second. You can share your screen with me and I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Hopefully other people aren't having that issue as well. <laughs> it might just be the platform, but I'll, I'll take a look in just a second. Um, if anyone else has any issues getting on the discord or anything, uh, just DM me. Um, I can just add you manually. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for checking in. Um, I'll have everyone else can hop off except for Berta so I can help them out. Uh, if anyone has any questions, reach out. Um, or if you all just want to talk or amongst yourselves, uh, hop on the Discord. You'll be there anyways if you get into this space. Thanks, Thanks for doing this, Kyle. Yeah, of course, guys. It was Anytime. really great. And I have about a million more questions. So look forward to chatting. Yeah, yeah. dude, absolutely. Team Kyle, E-bar for the win.